the channel I'm Modi Jay and we are locked in. This is the recap of episode 7, Power Book 2 Ghost, I Can't Fix This. And with that title name, no one in this episode can fix anything. Everyone is running around like a chicken with their head cut off and everyone is trying to backdoor each other in order for them to be the last person standing. Now before we jump into this and I do the recap of episode 7, if you like power content, breakdown series and predictions like this, then you're at the right spot. Hit that subscribe button, turn on your notification bell so you get something every time I upload. Make sure you hit that like button. Hopefully, you're subscribed. Now, let's go ahead and jump into it. This is episode 7 to recap. The first thing we see is Diana in the hospital. And well, unfortunately, people, the baby doesn't make it. There is no Tejada slash St. Patrick hybrid baby. And Diana, she's hurting real bad. But she basically gets Tariq up out the room because she's saying you being in the dope game is what got us in this situation. Now, Tariq has been wanting to take care of her and the baby, but ultimately he failed. So Diana tells him to get out. Tariq runs into Monet and she's asking about the baby. Well, he says straight up, you have to go in there and see for yourself. But he didn't tell her that Diana had kicked him out. But he says, this was my baby too. And don't you worry about it, Monet. I'm going to take care of this situation because everyone wants revenge. They all know that Felicia did it. The only question is, who's going to get to her first? Kane even shows up to the hospital once he gets word of what happened. And when he gets there, Monet is telling Kane, get out of here. But Kane is going to stand up for his sister. Now you hear Diana, she's kind of upset and she does say that it's Felicia. Now Kane is looking at his mom and he tells Diana straight up, you call me as soon as Monet messes this up. Now Monet and Kane have been clashing, but he wants to prove that he's the man of the family and he's stepping up for Lorenzo Sr. RIP and Jr. is the next on deck. Rashad Tate is called to identify his brother Kamal. Now RIP to that man, and we know that Don Carter did it, but Don Carter is sitting here watching, acting like he didn't have anything to do with it. Rashad Tate, we know he used to be a police officer and he's telling Don Carter, are there any leads? What do you have going on? You need to tell me something. I can use my resources and get more people on this task force to help out. Now Don, he's being reserved because remember, he's the one that did the unalive. But what he does promise Rashad Tate is, listen, we're gonna stop everything in the streets and we won't stop until we find who did this to your brother. And Rashad Tate tells him, you better make sure I'm the first person you call when you find out who did this. Davis and Noma have been getting very, very close. And you know, she's been wide open, no pun intended, but she needs Davis's help. And what he comes over and tells her is, listen, you don't have citizenship. You're still trying to get those government contracts. What you should do is put your business in a American citizen's name to be the majority owner, 51%. Now he's saying, you should put it in my name. But she's like, you think you're gonna play me? He said, you need to put it in someone's control that you can use. Do you think you can use me? So there's a little bit of flirting, but also Davis is trying to get his foot back in the game. And if he owns 51%, the majority stake, he really makes all of the calls over her company. Over in Tariq's dorm room, Brayden is in here knocked out because he has nowhere to go. And he tells Brayden straight up, a dirty cop attacked Diana and my baby was hurt. Then they get a knock on the door. Well, it turns out it's Stokely from the artist group that performs at the concerts at Tarika Braden. Now Stokely is saying, you two were fired because we want our music to speak for itself. We don't want junkies at our, at our shows. Now Tariq is saying, you can't fire us. Plus we put you on. Braden's like, yeah, that's on us. Well, you know how it is. These young gentlemen, the testosterone is building up, they go at it. But Brayden ends up breaking it up and they kick Stokely up out of here. But it's about to get ugly on this campus because we heard Stokely say that he would tell if this keeps up. After the incident with Kamal Tate and Rashad Tate coming up there and identifying his brother's body, this has Don Carter very, very nervous. So he has to go back to the task force and he's trying to find somebody to put this body on. So what does he do? He tells Nico, and Felicia, listen, open up the case on the Russian. We need to find who may have did this, who may have got revenge on Kamal Tate. Now, Nico was saying that the Russians all ran away after the raid that they pulled. But Don Carter doesn't care about this. He needs someone to put this crime on to get all of the heat off of his back. Drew still has a mission that he has to complete for the task force, and that's taking out Roman. In return for taking out Roman, his sister and mother will get the protection. 
Now him and Roman, they have a face off and this is the first time they've seen each other after Drew hit him with the tray. Now, Drew, we never seen this side of him. But while he's in here, Drew is standing on business and he's trying to catch bodies, anything to protect his family. Kane comes to talk to Noma, and this is the first time that he's really starting to piece together what's actually going on between Davis and Noma. We know that Davis has been talking to Noma about putting the business in his name or an American with citizenship so she can start getting these contracts. Now, once Kane shows up, he starts asking Noma, can you trust Davis? Can you trust Tariq? Because remember, these two were trying to get in Noma's good graces and cut a better deal. But Noma's like, I don't need to explain myself to you. And Kane says, well, if that's the case, well, we'll go out and we'll find some information so I can show that everything that you've been thinking is going on is really not the way you think it is. Because somebody has been leaking information and someone stole your money and I'm going to find it out. Monet has been trying to calm Diana down because Diana wants to get revenge on Felicia for taking her baby. She summons Don Carter and they meet up outside on the river. Now, Don Carter doesn't like to be summoned, but this is where both sides get to speak their piece. Monet is saying, why would you allow Felicia to attack Diana? And Diana was pregnant. Felicia killed the baby. Don is saying, I didn't have anything to do with that. But don't do anything stupid, Monet. Meaning you and Diana, you do not need to be going after Felicia. Let me handle this. And remember, I don't like being summoned. So don't talk to me that kind of way. Tariq shows up at Tasha's house. Now it's been a while since they've seen each other and the last time that they did was when Tasha was at work. Now Tasha knows that something is up. Tariq shows up and he's lying just like ghosts. We do see Yaz, she became a young adult. And then Tariq finally opens up with Tasha and he tells her everything about Diana being pregnant. He tells her that there's some issues going on with Noma and specifically with Monet who Tasha tried to unalive. But Tasha is saying, don't get involved in their problems. Whatever they have going on with this dirty cop, Felicia, Don Carter, Tariq, you need to stay away from it. So Tasha is being the voice of reason. Plus, she needs Tariq to get this inheritance to take care of her and Yaz. Kane goes to ask Effie, what does she know about the Russians? And is there a potential snitch that gave up some money or stole the money? But Effie's trying to explain to Kane, listen, I had the money. But the cops took it. So Kane is saying we need to get into a police officer's file and see if there's any snitches or any informants that have been working with the police that are part of the Russians. Now, Effie, she's the closest one with the Russians and been brokering deals. She's saying, Kane, trust me, there isn't. But if you want me to look, OK, I need a police officer's laptop. And Kane says, if you can get this information, you'll be able to get out of the game, Effie. From there, Kane and Effie go over to Braden. And when they open the door, they catch him in the act of snorting the line or two. Now, Braden, he's kind of losing it, but he's down for whatever with Tariq. And Kane tells him, listen, I need you and Effie to break into this house, get this laptop, and get any information we can off of it. Now, Braden is thinking, man, this sounds crazy. But listen, I'll do it if Effie turns over all of the business. She gives me the business to Stansfield. Effie says, you know what? I'll do you one better. I'll give you the business to all of the schools. Now, Kane doesn't like this because that's their operation and this is how he's going to make money. But you can see that Effie is really trying to get out of the game. I told you, Don Carter has been running around trying to figure out what is next. We got the Kamal body. We got Monet. And now we find out about Felicia. And Felicia actually didn't take out Zion. She told Diana. Also, she couldn't make any moves because the IAB was watching her. But now Don is saying, did you know that Diana was pregnant before you stomped her out? Felicia's like, I had no idea, but I do have the footage of Zion and Tariq did it. So Don is looking like, why did you do this? I didn't expect Diana to go and tell Tariq to do it. So Don is like, you need to go home and don't say nothing to anybody. I'll handle this. So Don, he has the whole task force messing up. Plus he has to deal with the Tejadas. It's going to be a long day for this brother. Now it's time to execute the plan. Braden and Effie, they go to the house and it's Nico's wife's house. They knock on the door and say that they arrived down the street. The lady lets them in. Braden is up front getting his wounds attended to. Effie goes in the back. She starts hacking into the computer. 
Well, the lady starts to get a little bit suspicious because the story isn't adding up. Then all of a sudden, Effie texts his cane and he knocks on the door. And we're thinking it's about to go down. But when she opens the door, Kane has on Ramirez's jacket and he's acting like a police officer. And he tells her, hey, there's been a lot of burglaries around here. You need to stay safe. Who made the phone call? So Effie says she did. This is after she got all of the evidence off of the computer. Then he looks at Braden and says, Caucasian male, come with me. The plan was successful. They got the information off the computer. Don Carter and Nico, they finally find out where some of the Russians are. Now, this is where Nico is going to realize that Don Carter ain't really on the same page that he's supposed to be on. They go in, kick the door open. They unalive a couple of the Russians. And when they get in the back, we see Don Carter come face to face with one, shoots him, puts a dirty gun in his hand. And it's the same gun that unalive Kamal. And he tells Nico, it's not what you know, it's what you can prove. We write it up. We kicked in the door. They shot at us. We shot back. And that's why this guy's unalive. So at least we have a dirty gun with a dead body for Kamal Tate. Diana has been following Felicia all day. Followed her to her house. Felicia's taking the trash out. Diana sneaks into the house. And inside the kitchen, Diana is waiting for Felicia with a gun. And Felicia's telling her, you can't do this. But Diana said, you took my son away from me. Now it's time to get even. So they get to fighting. They going back and forth. Felicia's winning at one point. Diana's winning. Then Felicia gets on her and puts a bag over her head. Diana ends up kicking her elbow to gut. She gets out of it. And while Felicia's on the ground, she picks up a cast iron skillet. And she commences to whooping on Felicia and unalives her in the kitchen. Diana catches her first body. Back at the coroner's office, remember Rashad Tate told Don Carter, I need to be the first one you call when y'all catch whoever did this to my brother. Well, Don shows him the body, says, hey, the ballistics match. Here's your guy. It was a Russian that did it. Now, it doesn't seem like Rashad Tate is believing him, but it seems like he's going along with it. And he's saying, I see why my brother joined this task force. You guys are on it. You guys said you were going to go find him and you did it by the end of the day. Now, Don Carter, he can rest easily for a little bit, knowing that Kamal Tate has got justice and Rashad ain't going to really be breathing down his neck as much trying to figure out what happened. The only thing is, I don't think that Rashad Tate really believes this is what's happening. While Diana's at the house, she ends up calling Tariq after she killed Felicia because Felicia's son is here and she needs some help. Now, this is where the story gets a little weird because Tariq and Diana, they end up playing house. There's no gloves worn. They're sitting around. They actually talking to Felicia's son. They read him a bedtime story. Tariq's in the hallway watching like a proud father. But then they have a heart to heart saying, unalive and somebody isn't going to change anything. And Diana, I'm going to make sure I got your back at all times. And out of nowhere, Monet ends up showing up. We also hear that Kane is proposing to Noma to keep this business going on, and he says it'll be strictly business. Now, Effie was the one that got the case files and all of the information, which let Kane know that Felicia was on this task force. So Effie decided to stay at Kane's penthouse while he went to talk to Noma, where he went to propose. But Effie's waiting up on Kane, and he doesn't show up. So she ends up leaving. But before she leaves, she gets a phone call from her mom. Now, we've never seen her mom or known who she was, but it looks like we're going to start finding out who she is. While Tariq, Diana, and Monet are having a kumbaya, Don Carter had got Drew out of jail. Well, Drew got a text message from Monet talking about Diana handled the situation. Meet at the spot. Well, since Drew is with Don, he brought Don on over here, and Don sees Felicia's body on the ground, and he tells everyone to put their hands up, takes Monet's gun, and he says, y'all really just messed up y'all have to work for me and give me some leverage on noma because if not i'm gonna put this body on each and every one of you so diana has drugged everyone in her family into this unaliving of a cop and now even Tariq is working for don carter and don carter is telling Tariq, hey you better use your brains mister because you <laughs> you're gonna be the brains behind the operation all right there you go to recap for episode seven i can't fix this let me know what you think about Diana. Unalive in the cop, hanging out in the cop's house, reading the bedtime story to the baby, dragging Tariq into it, 
telling her mom where she's at and then having Drew show up. So now everyone works for Don Carter. What do you think about this? Let me know what you think. Guys, we just hit 50,000 subscribers. So our next milestone is 100,000. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button if you're new. Hit that like button. I'm Odi J. I'm out.